Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. Happy new month. We are officially in the month of November. I hope everybody's doing good this morning. So I wanted to come on here and talk about the whole Keith Lee situation. My phone has been blowing up about this, especially being that I just got back from Atlanta. Keith Lee was down there for one music fest. I, too, was down there. And I know a lot about the ATL restaurant experience. So I want to go ahead and kind of break down what went on with Keith Lee and why this is such a hot button topic right now all over social media. Okay, so for y'all who don't know, Keith Lee is a former, or maybe he still fights, I'm not sure, but he was an MMA fighter, and he decided to, you know, go from MMA to doing food reviews on TikTok, and he has built up a following of 14.5 million faithful followers, including my youngest son. My youngest son is a big fan of Keith Lee. Anytime I brought him down to Atlanta, he's like, let's go eat here because Keith Lee said it was, you know, popping, okay? So Keith Lee's influence is definitely massive and people take his critique, good or bad, to heart, okay? So what went down is that he was down in Atlanta um, and he was doing his food tour. Now he's been doing a food tour in different cities for like the past few months. He went to Detroit, he was in Chicago, and now he decided to come to Atlanta. Now one thing about Keith Lee is that he sees himself as a regular human being, which he is, we all are. So he does not want preferential treatment. So a lot of times he sends in, you know, his family members or friends, people who are not on camera, people who are not recognizable. He sends them into the establishments to see, you know, how they're being treated, the customer service, wait times, things like that. And he noticed there was a long list of issues in Atlanta and he was not lying. Like he was literally pulling back the curtains on all the nonsense that goes down in the Atlanta restaurant scene that I myself have seen as well. So the drama first began when Keith Lee decided to go to the Atlanta Breakfast Club. Um, there was no space to wait while being seated. They were charged extra, like a dollar for butter. Um, there were just like a whole list of rules, you know, rules and regulations to simply eat. And so he really wasn't feeling that. I mean, he gave them a fair review but you could just tell like they wanted a whole lot and the food was basically mid. The food was nothing to write home about for all of these rules and regulations that the Atlanta Breakfast Club had. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this review really quick here. Fresh off the plane at ATL, the first place we went to is Atlanta Breakfast Club. I got it. Let's try it and rate it one to ten. We spent $144.60. But granted, we got food for five adults and two kids. The customer service was interesting. While the people were nice, the rules they had set were very unique to me. We initially tried to do takeout, but when we came in, they said we couldn't sit down and there was no space at the bar for us to stand. So we had to stand outside to order our food. And then we decided we just gonna dine in. But two people in our party stepped out for a second. Cause again, we fresh off the plane. So everybody was trying to get situated. The waitress, again, she was nice, but she told us she couldn't take any orders or she couldn't do anything until everybody sat down. No water, no coffee, no drink orders, no nothing. She also said they can only do one order and there's no add-ons. Like if you want to add on afterwards, it's a wrap. One order for the whole table. She wouldn't even explain the menu to us. But again, she was very nice. I just understand that those are their rules. Unique to me, but it is what it is. I'm gonna show you everything I got and we're gonna try it and ready to this again. Peach cobbler French toast, a breakfast bowl, which is eggs, bacon, cheese, and a biscuit. Last but not least, salmon croquettes. Peach cobbler French toast is separated, which I appreciate. Pour it right on top. Said it came with a shortcake topping. I think this is it. It's just one block. Am I supposed to break it up myself? They don't break up. Oh, wait. Oh, there you go. This is like wheat bread or whole grain toast. It's not my favorite thing, but it's also not my least favorite thing. It's all right. You can see where the French toast dipping absorbed into the bread. I would say like 10% of the bread is coated in that French toast. The rest of it is just bread. And the peaches are the only thing that's hot in this. Six out of 10. This is the breakfast bowl. It's just eggs, bacon, and potatoes. Everything is seasoned well. I'm not mad at that at all. Especially with some hot sauce. This would be real good. It's a very basic breakfast, but with basic, it's kind of easy to mess up. And I don't think that messes up. 7.5 out of 10. Let's see what this biscuit talking about. You give me no jelly. No jelly. Yes, some syrup on a biscuit? Yeah. That's They're crazy work. The butter is a dollar. 
The butter a dollar? Yeah, that's right. Swear to God. The butter a dollar? At a breakfast place? Swear to God. That was like... That little cut. That little cut. That little cut. He said it. He said it. It ain't jelly for sure. It's buttery. It's salty. It's a good biscuit. I just can't swallow it. <laughs> it's dry. That's like any biscuit. So I'm not farting this biscuit specifically. But I am farting. See? You hear my, how my words coming out? <laughs> but I am farting the fact that it don't come with jelly. And butter is a dollar. That's crazy. Last but not least, the salmon croquette. It's good. Is it? It's good? Mm -hmm. I need some sauce. It comes with a little remoulade sauce. I just didn't put it on at first. That's much better. Let me see these grits. They have some seasoned grits. Mm -hmm. The salmon croquette itself isn't that seasoned, but with the remoulade sauce, these grits is buttery and salty and thick. 7.8 out of 10. This is my favorite thing. For the first time in Atlanta, I'm very interested to see what the rest of this trip holds. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Y'all be safe. All right, so you guys just saw Keith Lee's review, and you could tell, like, you know, he was trying to be positive, and for the most part, you know, some of the food was good, but to charge a dollar for butter is insane, okay? Now, the second place that Keith Lee and his family visited was called The Real Milk and Honey. Now, at this restaurant, they were unable to call in a uh, order, and that's one thing I've noticed in Atlanta, you cannot call in orders. Like, here in Minnesota, if I know I'm not going to dine in, I can call and be like, hey, I'm placing this order. I'll be there to pick it up, you know, in 30 minutes or even some restaurants here in Minnesota, they will bring it to you. And like you'll have these restaurants listed on DoorDash and then you go to place your order. You go to submit it and it's oh, We don't take DoorDash. Well, if you don't take DoorDash, why are you on DoorDash? So that is a very frustrating part in Atlanta that you cannot call ahead. You know, a lot of times DoorDash doesn't work. So I can understand his frustration with that. Because I've had to literally settle for like fast food just because the restaurant that I want to eat at did not do DoorDash and I didn't have a way there at that particular time. So anyhow, when him and his family showed up, the restaurant claimed that they were closed. They were saying that, you know, they were in the middle of doing a deep clean, but yet and still the restaurant doors were wide open. Um, it was normal business hours. It wasn't like it was 12 o'clock, you know, a.m. And so he, they basically told the family to go. In so many words, like we're busy cleaning, you know, y'all got to go. But then all of a sudden when Keith Lee, you know, the famous man with 14.5 million followers on TikTok, when he walked up to the restaurant, they recognized him. They immediately opened their doors. All of a sudden, oh, the doors opened up like the pearly gates of heaven. OK, and they were ready to welcome him in with open arms. And Keith Lee was not feeling that, you know, he's like, wait. My family got turned around, but now all of a sudden when I come up there, y'all want to let me in? So check out what Keith Lee had to say about the situation right here. My family are in Atlanta, and currently we are at the Real Milk and Honey. I got it. Let's try it and rate it 1 through 10. As you can see, I don't have any bags in my hands. We are at the Real Milk and Honey on Main Street and College Park. Before we came, we attempted to call our order in. We were greeted with an automatic message that said they do not take call-in orders. The automatic message said the only way you can do pickup is through DoorDash. We went through DoorDash. They was closed. But online, it said they closed at 5 o'clock. We went on DoorDash at 4 o'clock. But we were already here, so we just went inside. I stayed in the car, and my family went in, and they told them they were closed early for deep cleaning. Yet, the door is wide open, and it's people still going in and grabbing their orders. Now, we have no idea if those people ordered beforehand or what the case is. Also, the people who relayed this message, my family said, were really nice. It's just the rules. And so far, being in Atlanta, I found some places do have unique rules, and this is one of them. I want to be very clear. We are not blaming one person or saying one person was rude. In plain terms, don't call this restaurant trying to get nobody fired. Ain't nobody do nothing. This is just the rules they had. If you don't like their rules, their rules not for you. And for me and my family, the rules just went for us. We just not their target audience. For the record, afterwards, I did walk in, and they did recognize and they attended the services but i respectfully declined i'm a normal person i pay for my food like everybody else i walk in spots like everybody else we are all normal people respectfully if you're not gonna do it then don't do it now god bless you yeah we're just trying to get some food but i am gonna make this very clear i do not support condone or agree tearing down these businesses while we personally may not have the best customer service experience that does not mean you will have the same experience that also don't mean go on Twitter and tear these businesses down. At the end of the day, business owners are people. Never know what people are going through. The only reason I'm even making this is to share my authentic and real experience like I always do. I don't mean no harm. I don't have no malicious intent. But I always say I'm going to be 100% honest. And that come with the good and the not so good. You don't know what nobody going through. So what we can't do is just judge off of somebody else's experience. If you like to go to these places or any other place that I've been to, I encourage you to go try it for yourself and make your own opinion. But we still in Atlanta and we on Main Street and it's a bunch of spots here. So we're going to go to a different spot. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Y'all be safe. 
All right, so you guys just saw that video, and Milk and Honey were definitely not happy about the review. So first they tried to do this dusty skit, Honey, um, where the owner was saying, you know, who, who is Keith Lee? And he's talking to his daughters, and they're just trying to play it off like they don't know who he is, but yet and still, y'all decided to create a whole skit. I guess, Honey. Y'all go ahead and watch this. Did you see this Keith Lee video about the real Milk and Honey? And who is this Keith Lee? Daddy, you don't know Keith Lee? Yeah. No. Honey, you know damn well who Keith Lee is. Quit playing with my top. All right, y'all just seen that dry ass skit, honey. Drier than them damn biscuits that Keith Lee caught himself trying to swallow at the Atlanta Breakfast Club. So with that being said, what was even more crazy about the whole real milk and honey situation is the fact that one of the employees who is a manager at Milk and Honey, she went online and she says this, y'all let an autistic man tell y'all where to eat, also, it's only TikTok. Nobody give a fuck in real life. Be for real. Now, my thing is, I don't know a whole lot about Keith Lee's um, medical history, you know, psychological history. I don't know because it's none of my business because there's a thing called HIPAA laws. But I'm confused. So autistic people are not allowed to eat and give their opinion. I didn't know that if you were on the spectrum, you know, your opinion didn't matter. And I don't even know if this man is autistic. But it, regardless if he is or not, he has a right to do a food review. So you saying that he's autistic, his opinion should be null and void, to me is not only insensitive, but it's also very insulting. She since deleted the tweet after getting drugged, and Milk and Honey sent out a message basically saying that, oh, the employee has been reprimanded and fired. Child, child, we don't believe you. You need more people, okay? The employee should have known how to handle that better than what they did. But I digress. So then chaos really continued, okay? When Keith Lee's family was basically invited to visit Old Lady Gang, um, which is owned by Real Housewives of Atlanta member Candy Burris, okay? So they got there. They found out that there was no takeout option. And Lee's family, because remember, he sends his family in first. They were told that the wait time was going to be an hour and a half. And so... They're like, dang, that's such a long time. So Keith Lee decided to walk into the restaurant because, again, he was invited to come to Old Lady Gang. And somehow, once he walked up, all of a sudden, ah, just like the last restaurant, them Old Lady Gang doors opened up wide for Keith Lee, and they told him that they could have a table ready for him in five minutes, okay? Okay. And, you know, it's it's just insane. They they came up to him once they saw that, you know, he was outside taking photos with fans. Then they wanted to usher him in. But Keith Lee was like, no, this is not the restaurant for us. We're looking for equal treatment for all people, regardless of status. So after that went viral, of course, Candy decided to, you know, do a bootleg speak on it and talk about the situation without really addressing the situation. So y'all go ahead and check out Keith Lee's review and Candy's response right here. Yesterday, me and my family were at the One Music Festival. Somebody who works with Candy Birds walked up to us and said they've been trying to reach us since we got to Atlanta. He said he'd been constantly emailing me and constantly DMing me for me to come to Old Lady Gang. I got it, let's try it, and rate it one through 10. As you can see, I don't have any bags in my hands. Me and my family showed up and we attempted to order before we got here. We called the number they had connected on Yelp three times, no answer. We tried to order through DoorDash and it said it was temporarily closed. So when we pulled up, I sent my family in to order for us. They said on the weekends, due to being busy, they don't do any takeout at all. They do to go order? No, we don't do to order on the weekend. Oh, okay, so send in dining. Yes. Okay, thank you, sweetie. We appreciate you. Which is completely understandable. So what we decided to do is my family's going to go eat. They're going to come bring the food out while I'm sitting in the car so they have no idea I'm here. My family asked how long the wait was to be seated. They said an hour to an hour and a half. Yes, hour and a half. Okay. She also said they didn't have any reservations available. So they didn't take down any number, any contact information, nothing. My family then came and relayed that message to me, and I decided to go in myself. We walked in, and we were greeted by a nice young lady. And then I met some amazing people who were eating there, and we took some pictures. God is amazing. As soon as me and my wife were done taking pictures, the lady said the table was ready. As always, I don't want any special treatment. I want to be treated like everybody else. I pay for my food like everybody else. I'm a normal person. I'm a normal customer. Things like this is exactly why I do reviews the way I do. Just because I have a certain amount of followers on social media don't make me different from nobody. My mom, my mom-in-law, my sister, they all paying customers just like me. So I want them to be treated just like me. So I asked how long the wait time has been today. She said an hour to an hour and a half. So which I then asked, how were you able to sit me in five minutes? This is her response. How long was it before I fired? I'm just gonna sit up there. Oh, I mean, I was gonna wait, this I called, okay. 
Again, my family just attempted to eat there less than two minutes ago. I didn't tell her. I changed my mind. We're going to go eat somewhere else. And I said, God bless you. And I walked out. On second thought, it's okay. We're we going to go eat somewhere else. So I appreciate it, though. For sure. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Y'all have a great day. Have a good one. Have a great day. I'm gonna be very transparent and honest. I am frustrated. Me and my family just trying to eat food. That's all we try to do. At the same time, I am frustrated. I understand we are all humans. I do not agree. I do not support. I do not condone shame in this business based on my experience. Like every city we've been to since we've been on food tour, I go to an array of restaurants from mom and pop shops to staples of the community to super popular to places nobody know about. And Atlanta has definitely been a unique experience for me and something I'll never forget. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart genuinely, but I'm a normal person and I want to be treated like everybody else. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Y'all be safe. And I'm not playing. I understand everybody got their own opinions on situations, but don't go leaving them zero star reviews. You ain't never been here before. If you like to come experience it yourself and then leave your reviews, but just leaving a review based on my experience is crazy in my opinion. God bless you. Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl Candy and I'm about to speak on it. No, I'm joking. I'm not about to speak on it. I really just wanted to say I do appreciate Keith Lee for stopping by our restaurant and trying to show us love. It is very unfortunate that we couldn't serve him and his family. We'd have, we would have loved to, okay? But he's right. We don't take to-go orders on the weekends and the simple reason is because we do love and appreciate the people who come and support our restaurant. On the weekends, we get a lot of community support, people in our city that show up for us, as well as a lot of people from out of town. So with that being said, we don't want to overwhelm our kitchen by having to you know, have such long times for the people who are actually at the restaurant, plus having to do to-go orders, because obviously that would make the, long, the wait times even longer. So that's the reason for that. Um, for those of you, I saw a couple of people was like, why wouldn't they take to-go orders? Well, that's why. Anyway, with that outside of that, I want to say thanks to Keith for trying to even show up to our restaurant and show us love. Thanks for trying to bring your family by. And maybe next time, we'll still get a chance to serve you. All right, so you guys just saw both of those videos. Now, what's also interesting is that Cardi B also chimed in and she agreed with Keith Lee. Cardi B lives in Atlanta off and on and she's had the same issues trying to get food and things like that. So I want you guys to listen to what Cardi B had to say about the situation. Talking about this guy called Keith. He does restaurant review and I'm like, who is that? Who is that? And and then I'm starting to see that like he's doing re reviews in Atlanta and everything. So I started getting into um his reviews and all this bullshit and everything so while um while i know that um being a restaurant owner is a lot of hard work and so many people have invested money in their restaurants and people you know like this there is there everything but i always find this eating in atlanta it is such an event and I always say this to my man, like, I always say this, like, it's something about the restaurants in Atlanta. I don't know, is it because I'm from New York, right? And I feel like in New York, people just love to make money. I feel like in Atlanta, it's always something like first thing first, right? I feel like Atlanta restaurants, they don't like to make money. I feel like they don't like people. They don't like their customers. They just don't fucking like it. First thing first, right? You could barely order in Atlanta restaurants. Like you go like, hey, I would like to make an order. Oh yeah, we don't make, we don't we don't take orders. We don't take orders. It gets to the point that I literally have to name like I have to tell like people that order food for me like, can you just name drop my name? Because first and first, they just don't they don't do no pickup orders. They don't do deliveries. They just don't do shit. Second, Atlanta restaurants, right? They be closed on the most random shit. Good. Oh, they closed. What is that? What do you mean? Y'all niggas is closed Monday through Wednesday. Or they'll just have the most random days closed. Like, oh, they close on Tuesday. Or, like, it's just the most random shit. Like, it's like, y'all motherfuckers don't like making bread. Like, I don't fucking get it. I don't get it. And then, with some Atlanta restaurants, I be noticing, too, that it's like, it's either, it's either they open, it's either, the, it's either they open too late. Or they close too early. Like, motherfuckers be closing like at 6 o'clock. Or will take a fucking... Will fuck... It, it's just it's just insanity. And it's always... The, the food way is so busy. It's so, so busy. Like, 
I feel bad for Atlanta residents. <laughs> Y'all have to go to thank thank you, Jesus. I'm famous, but even when even me being famous is is it's like a hassle. It's a hassle. Motherfuckers don't like making money out there. Like in New York, in New York, a restaurant is gonna open up early and gonna close up fucking late. They're gonna serve you all. The motherfucking time like even even with the bougie restaurants like i i even with the bougie restaurant it's not as bad as fucking like the atlanta service it's like like the atlanta like food the catering service like it's almost like it's like they treat you like you want motherfuckers to come back y'all want people to come back it's extremely bougie like eating in atlanta is extremely bougie and I just, I just, and I just thought it was me, but now that I see that other people feel that way, <laughs> I knew I wasn't crazy. I knew it. Or maybe sometimes, sometimes I'll be feeling like maybe because I come from a, a fast pacing city, they're just always like running and running and running and running. But no, I am not bugging. Atlanta is just fucking bougie. Atlanta is fucking bougie. That's it. Oh shit, my bad. But one thing I could say about Atlanta food is fucking amazing. All right, so you guys just saw that video. Now, what's even more disturbing is that yesterday, Keith Lee um, went to TikTok and he basically said that he's ending his food tour for now because he is receiving death threats. Him and his family are being threatened. There are tweets online where people are literally wanting to whoop his ass. They're threatening to unalive him. It is insane. And so people are going back and forth. This tweet says, Keith Lee needs to go back to his state because he's liable to get fucked up in the ATL. Somebody else says, fuck Keith Lee. You can screenshot this to him if you like. I do not understand how this shit person feels it is his mission to go around bad-mouthing black-owned businesses who hurt him. Somebody else says, why is Keith Lee's review so important? Y'all act like he doesn't like something, you're going to die. For the love of God, give it a rest. Somebody else says, I'm not going to lie, but y'all are starting to treat Keith Lee like a god. He's just a nigga trying food. Maybe we shouldn't live or die by his every review. Somebody else says, niggas think any minor disagreement requires gunplay. And then this person says, Keith Lee gon' die if he find the right one. People put their life savings into some of these businesses. He gon' fuck with the wrong one. That is extremely disturbing that not only was this man getting death threats, the restaurants, um, you know, people were sending them death threats as well. We have been following how some Metro Atlanta restaurants benefited from reviews by TikTok influencer Keith Lee. But what about the restaurants whose reviews weren't so positive? There's been a lot of talk about this on social oh, yeah. media. Yeah, Teresa Bowles found out how these restaurants are dealing with this backlash. The Milk and Honey restaurant wasn't even reviewed by influencer Keith Lee, but they received death threats because people got it mixed up with the real Milk and Honey, which is 20 minutes away. As a restaurant owner, Devin Green is used to reviews. It's already a hard industry and uh, the reviews are good, positive or negative. But he wants to earn them. This is the Milk and Honey restaurant, not to be confused with the real Milk and Honey, which got a not so great review from viral food critic Keith Lee last week. And when it started affecting business, he had to say something. Something. I'm bombed from negative comments, death threats, threats to blow the building up, threats to end our business. People were calling our phones. It was a nightmare. Lee's reviews also sparked conversations about Atlanta restaurant culture, rules and policies not seen in other cities. Green says despite the grass wall, that's not how they roll or waffle. We actually allow reservations. We have takeout to go. We use Uber Eats. We do DoorDash. We actually uh, employ a person just to take, take, in, take out orders. The Atlanta Breakfast Club, though, explains why these policies Lee brought up, such as reservations and no call-ins, are important. We set guidelines to expedite service because we have so many guests and customers that come to Atlanta. We just want as many people as possible to be able to share it. Anthony Sanders' restaurant didn't get the best review either, but he's taking it in stride as he says most of their reviews are positive. I didn't feel that what he said was offensive. It was a, a perspective from someone coming from Detroit, coming to Atlanta for the first time. Sanders says the Atlanta Breakfast Club has been around for a decade, one of the pioneer black-owned breakfast restaurants in Atlanta. Lee put out a video discouraging fans from spreading hate. If anything, Sanders hopes the reviews can be used to bring restaurants together. It allows us to observe and adjust. 
Will we do things better? Of course. Come in and know for yourself because I do believe that we have some of the best guest service. In Atlanta, Teresa Bowles, 11 Alive. And I think a lot of it is frustration with the Atlanta um, restaurant culture. And I can't lie. I have been given preferential treatments at times when I've gone down to Atlanta and I didn't think too much of it. Um, you know, where I see people waiting in line to go into Toast, like this past week when I was in Atlanta, when we pulled up to Toast, it was like a long line. That's like a brunch spot. So when I landed that Saturday, I had just only been off the plane like maybe like 20 minutes. They rushed me straight to brunch, shout out to my girls. And so the line at Toast was really long. And my girl called and was like, hey, we're here with an influencer, lovely T. Um, you know, we want to bring her here to eat. You know, we can't wait an hour. And miraculously, we were let in within 10 minutes. They found a table for us. So y'all know I bring receipts. And what's so funny is that I didn't even look at this like as privilege. I honestly, this is just Atlanta culture. And it's funny that Keith Lee was doing this review. And this was my experience at Toast. So if you guys, so as you guys can see, this is my conversation with my girl. And um, I'm showing her the food that I ordered. And she's, you know, she's lived in Atlanta and she misses it and stuff. So I told her we're having brunch at Toast. Like I literally had just landed. So she's like, oh, y'all are having a ball already. And I'm like, yeah, we're having brunch at Toast. Their food is real good she was like yep that's the place and I'm like girl they had an hour long wait my girl made a call and they walked us right in here and gave us a table the food is good I see why the lines are long so yes um they do play favorites if they know that you're an influencer or a celebrity but that is a part of Atlanta culture unfortunately but I didn't realize that it was that bad where other people were not getting served over influencers and celebrities. I didn't realize it until Keith Lee really bought it and homed it in for me. I was just like, I'm glad I don't have to wait for an hour. But really watching what is going on with this whole Keith Lee situation has really woken me up. Like, there is favoritism in Atlanta, and I didn't know it was that bad. You know, where, you know, when regular folks come to eat, if they don't know you, you're going to have to wait. Whereas if they feel like you have some type of following, they will hook you up and get you in the door. I've been privy to that. I've been given free meals and invited to places to come eat, you know, so I'm starting to recognize that as a privilege. And um, I don't disagree with anything that Keith Lee is saying. Nothing he says warrants death threats. Um, he's a really positive guy and he did leave a lot of positive reviews. He gave a few restaurants, um, thousand dollar tips. So it wasn't just these bad reviews, but I think that people do need to be held accountable. Accountability seems to be like a kryptonite. I don't think he did anything wrong. He was extremely respectful. Even when you could tell he was kind of annoyed, he was still respectful. And the fact that people are saying that he should die because you have restaurant owners that are too lazy and don't care enough to give good customer service to paying customers is insane. These people aren't out there looking for free food. These are paying customers, okay? And at the end of the day, you have to serve the people and you have to treat them well. It's not about a one-time thing. You want people to be repeat customers. And that is one thing that I do notice in Atlanta is that some of the customer service is lacking and they do try and nickel and dime everything. The fact that they charge him for butter, a dollar for butter is insane. When we went to BQE restaurant and lounge in Atlanta, which was really nice, the ambience was cool. The music was way too loud for me though, but um, the food was good. I got the lobster tacos. It was really good, but I noticed they do nickel and dime you for everything down in ATL. And um, you know, the food was pretty good. I did like their food, but I remember she kept coming by asking if we wanted hookah. Everybody knows I don't smoke. I'm like, no, I don't do hookah. And she literally came back like three times to keep asking, are you guys sure? It's like they kept trying to upsell us to do hookah. It's like, no, we don't want hookah. Now my thing is when I'm buying a meal, I had gotten like lobster tacos. So for just simply two lobster tacos, it was $18. And I get it, it's lobster. Okay, I'm willing to pay a little bit more. But I feel like if you're getting an entree, right? Um, you should get a free glass of water. Like it should, that should be standard. Water in a glass with lemon. But no, they wanted to charge $4 for a bottle of water. And it wasn't like, you know, Perrier. You know, and it wasn't like, you know, like a big 12 ounce bottle of water in a glass bottle. It was literally a small four ounce plastic bottle of water that they charged $4 for. I thought that was a bit much. Like water should come with your meal. The only thing that you should pay for to drink is if you're getting pop, 
I know y'all like to call soda, honey, but I'm from, you know, up up top, okay? We call it pop around these parts. <laughs> um, you know, yes, definitely charge for pop, definitely charge for liquor, but for water, $4 for a small bottle of water, I thought that was a bit of a reach. So they definitely do try and nickel and dime in the ATL at certain restaurants. And I think it says a lot more about the community down in Atlanta than it does about Keith Lee that he's receiving any of these type of threats. And I think it's also sad that people are saying that Keith Lee is anti black and um you know he's not a good person he's being horrible and you know elitist to these black businesses how is he anti-black because he's going to go check out black establishments and give them either positive or negative reviews i don't understand that it seems like people only want him to give good reviews but then again if he only gives good reviews and they'll say oh he's just being paid to give good reviews he's not being honest so like he said it's a double-edged sword okay let's talk about it every restaurant that me and my family go to we're either a invited by the restaurant themselves or b was told about the restaurant 100 plus times from locals from people who mention me from people who email me dm me 99 percent of the time i never go to a random restaurant with that being said my opinion was actually for so many narratives being pushed and it's insane to me but let's be honest what else do you want from me if i go to a bunch of restaurants and I have a string of good experiences then i'm being too nice i'm lying the narrative is being pushed that my eye roll is fake and i'm lying just to help people then on the same hand if i go to two or three restaurants where i don't have the best experience now i'm tearing down businesses now i'm being mean now i need to shut up now i need to mind my business now i need to sit down again i can't win for losing i understand everybody gonna have an opinion on the situation you can disagree with me you cannot like what i say completely understand and i'm okay with that but when my safety and my family's safety start coming into play, that's where I draw the line at. But what can't happen is when my family or the restaurants or anybody's safety start coming into play. It's absolutely overboard. Especially when I was asked to give my opinion. Because you telling me my opinion only matter if it's positive. Because if it's positive, you got my face plastered on the wall and you saying Keith Lee been here. But if it's negative, I need to sit down somewhere and you don't know who I am. That's crazy to me. It was so much positive that happened in Atlanta that was shunned by the negative. It was so many restaurants we was blessed enough to help. We went to an array of restaurants like we always do at every city. I'm gonna be 100% transparent, 100% candid. Me and my family will postpone touring if other cities gonna be like this. Every review not gonna be the best. I'm gonna be 100% honest. If you want me to come, please understand, I will be honest. I don't mean no harm, I don't have no malicious intent. I mean that and when I say it, I mean it. People be like, well, you know what you're doing. You know if you give a bad review, people gonna come and flood it with hate comments. What else do you want me to do? I'm telling people not to go and leave hate comments. I'm telling people not to leave negative comments. I'm telling people make their own opinions. You want me to lie and say I had a good experience or you want me to only post the videos when I have a positive experience? That all of the videos I post is only gonna be positive experience. Then the narrative's gonna be pushed and I'm only trying to be positive and we're gonna end up in the same situation. And on top of that, I think something's getting lost in translation. When that happens, the restaurants that we are blessed enough to help won't be helped in the same manner because people won't show up in the same way because my reviews would be inauthentic. One of the reasons people show up the way they do is because they know I'm being honest and I'm giving my personal opinion and my personal perspective on the situation. But if I don't do that anymore, it won't be the three or four hour wait times and now we won't be able to help business owners and we won't be able to give back to the community. In the grand scheme, that's what this is about. It's about giving back. It's about giving back to the community. It's about stimulating the economy. That's what it's about. All the other stuff, I'm a simple man in real life. As long as me and my family are healthy and safe and we can live a comfortable life, I'm straight. Again, it's a double-edged sword. I understand with great power comes great responsibility. God made me for this. I'm built for this. At the end of the day, I just want to eat food, walk in my path. If you want to be on a journey with me, you are more than welcome. If you don't, God bless you. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all be safe. And nobody's safety should be on the line. Not mine, not my family, not the restaurants that we go to. Relax. Like, relax, bro. Like, I understand. I get it. I get it. But at the end of the day, what you want me to do? You want me to lie? I can't do that. I'll walk away from everything before I lie. I'm telling you that right now. On 10 toes. Everything. God bless you. And it's sad when he respectfully says that, you know, he wasn't really filling this restaurant or that he didn't like this meal. It's an issue. But Gordon Ramsay can cuss folks out, tell people that their food tastes like shit, call them all types of bitches, snap on that show Hell's Kitchen. And he's literally an, a legend. He's literally a multimillionaire. Like people worship the ground that Gordon Ramsay, you know, walks on. Jeff! Right. Don't whistle at me. I'm not your fucking dog. Yeah, you look more like a dog than I do. And the second a black man is doing something somewhat similar in a very respectful way, it's an issue. And I think that's sad because, again, I've never seen white taste testers and white people who go to do these type of reviews. I've never seen them threatened. I've never seen them cussed out. I've never seen this much controversy ever. I mean, this made local news all through Atlanta. So this entire situation is crazy. We're going to talk about this more. I'm going to do a live show later on this evening. 
evening. And I would love to hear from my AT aliens. I want y'all to call in and I want to hear from the people as far as, you know, this whole Keith Lee situation. Do you guys agree with this? And does the culture in Atlanta need to change? Because I think that's where the conversation is being missed, that the celebrity worship culture in Atlanta is insane. There is a very much elitist culture, a bourgeoisie culture in Atlanta that a lot of people, you know, don't really want to talk about. And we're going to have that discussion tonight. So make sure you guys tune in. Um, I guess I'll probably go live about child between five and seven just give me around that time um and you guys will be able to call in and we can definitely engage in this conversation so i will see you guys later on tonight thank you guys for checking out this video please make sure to like comment subscribe feel free to share the video most importantly make sure you guys are still subscribed to my channel and i will talk to y'all later deuces if you want the latest news in the streets join us and tune in for the tea breaking news with integrity so sell your friends and your family yeah. It's the lovely TV show Bringing you good tea and good vibes It's the lovely TV show Be sure to share, like, and subscribe